Critical Blast, where pop culture gets blasted. And good evening once again. I am RJ Carter, Senior Managing Editor here at CriticalBlast.com. And tonight, yes, we're doing it again. We're looking at crowdfunded comics. It's all we do. We're, 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 we're always on crowdfunded comics because there's so dead many of them. And they're all good. And we can't make up our minds which ones we want to promote more. So tonight, we're promoting this one. Uh, we are going to go back to the world, the, the wild world of Kyrie. And with us, we have Matt Crotts and Larry Bernard, who have worked together on this one. Guys, how are you doing tonight? Hey, doing well, doing great. Uh, it's been I'm a long doing time great coming. As well. Yeah. Excited to it, be here. It has been a while since you've been on here with uh, with Kyrie. Um, and, and and by now, people should be saying Kyrie, right? They're, they're not, you don't still have people going Kyrie, right? Yeah, I, I'd say most people say Kyrie, so I'm kind of I've I've caught myself saying that, and that's that's fine. I always say like so long as people know how to uh, spell it when they're yes. when they're searching Indiegogo, they can they can pronounce it any way they like. So. You, you just need to you need to license uh, Sting's uh, song, and and just let let the chorus play over it. You know. Wait, are you referring to the uh, the Mister Mister song? Is that the uh, one? I thought. <laughs> I know all the thing was involved references. Somewhere. <laughs> was he? That's not I that's don't. not Desert Rose. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Oh, Dream wait, of the no, Blue Turtles. Sealed. I don't know. I don't, we're messing it up. Off to a bad start. Mm. Oh, well, you know what? When I Google it, it, it suggests Sting Kyrie Eleazon, but you know it's. Oh really? Oh. Okay. But that doesn't mean that ah the lyrics were by Sting. So. Oh, cool. So Kyrie it, it has a Sting vibe the road, to it. Must trap. Yeah. Yeah. So so I was right. I'm taking the win. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, but but Mr. Oh, Mooster oh, did sing it. Uh, Matt, yeah. Matt Matt Reese in the chat is correct. Uh, it will be. It, it is Mr. Mister singing it, but Sting wrote it. And writers are important. Sting was just the our, our Mr. Mister was just the the inker equivalent of <laughs> the music world. Just the inker. Just the yeah. Anchor. He was, tra he was tracing the lyrics. Yeah. Got an active chat tonight. We've got a uh, Keely Chow out yeah. here. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Matt, looking forward to being on your show this Thursday uh, as the probably the youngest of the old guys. Uh, Paulus Arts is here. Welcome. So uh, what what other comics have you been involved in? I mean, is, is, is Kyrie sort of like your bread and butter? I know Larry's been in other stuff. Yeah, um, I'd say... Uh... The way I'm trying to enter the comics world is I'm treating Curie like my, uh, I guess my my calling card, you know, my the foundation stone, and then I'm building out from there to doing uh, coloring for other people's comics. Uh, I'm just wrapping up uh, uh, John De La Rosa's uh, Dave's Vault, and. Yeah. Um, what else? I've, I've been co we co uh Narwhal and I co authored a uh, cowboy story, and uh, we're we're trying to figure out how to draw it right now too. And uh, yeah, um, I mean, solo projects are great. I I really think that uh the the crowdfunded in the crowdfunded sphere of like truly like independent with a capital I comics, uh, the ideal, like the platonic ideal of that sort of sphere is, is a single, uh, single creator, uh, just out of their blood, sweat and te tears kind of, uh, production. But, um, uh, in, in this, in this sphere, oh man, we have so many people in the chat. <laughs> I got to do the thing where I don't look. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 well, you, you, you got the, I don't know if you got a monitor up to your left, but you had this like heroic Captain Morgan pose the whole time you were talking. <laughs> yeah. 
ah, my back hurts. I'm just trying to lean back. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm just trying to, um, it's one of the things I'm doing with Kyrie is I'm trying to do like a group project. I want to see what that's like because I've only been doing solo projects. And that's one reason why I wanted to work with uh, Larry because uh, he is an excellent author and he knows a lot about the uh, the world of adventure uh, storytelling and he can uh, he's a really good chameleon with different types of genres. So uh, I, I needed him uh, to help figure out uh, the Ashcan in particular for this. Uh, but uh, I'm sure we'll be getting into that. But yeah, so that's that's me. Okay. Larry, Larry where are you? Yeah. What's your pedigree here? Uh, well, my pedigree here is I have an independent project I've been working on. And how I got involved with this project is Matt was saying, you know, I want to find a way to combine Sherlock Holmes and the man who would be king. But I haven't really come up with a good idea. And I was like, bro, let me give you an idea. And then we went back and forth, uh, a couple of scripts back and forth, then some amalgamation, the dark arts of editing. And now we have a comic book that's uh, doing very well in Indiegogo. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, $4,717 right now, not shared to the screen yet. Uh, Matt, do you find that, you know, now that you've fulfilled a couple of books that you're getting higher goals, uh, higher funding than you did before? Or is it just sort of keeping the same audience? You know, it's funny. Like, uh, I think I'm right now, I think Wild Tales is uh, it's it's resonating more deeply with the established artists. I mean, the established uh, fan base, the readership. I don't know if it's really expanding that much. I think Kyrie book two really expanded things, which was nice. I think a certain number of people came in for book one and the other people saw that I could fulfill it. And then I, I hit, I was able to get like twice as many people for book two. And now those same people are coming in uh, more deeply, I guess, for wild tales, which is exciting. So absolutely. The, the, the quaff is in the chat says, Whoa, it's Matt C's <laughs> face. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's funny how uh, you start to think that a person who uses an avatar looks like their avatar. And, uh, no, he's 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 neither olive skinned nor does he have you know great <laughs> hair. <laughs> I I couldn't let you be the only uh, bald guy, no, pretty no. face bald man on on and, camera. So and and you know I can I can tell you do it the same reason I do because we're cheap and we don't like barbers and we have clippers. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I we <laughs> well we won't speak for Larry. Uh, uh, well, no, no. If I, if I was on camera right now, I also would be another bald man with uh, a rough goatee and facial hair and glasses. <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't be able to tell us apart. It'd be like, we're twins. Uh, yeah, I, I did this one time. I was like, I, have, I had hair. Um, yeah. But when I shaved it down like this the one time, my hair is very straight. Uh, and it used to be like, you know, I used to comb to the side and had a part. And it was like, you know, I yep. didn't have my comb in my back pocket. I was good. Uh, but once I did this one time, it was like it kept growing. It would grow back out straight and, and it forgot to lay down. And it just kind of kept growing out straight. I looked, mm. I looked like a Harlem Globetrotter. Um, I could like reach <laughs> in there for stuff. It would never lay back down again. I'm like, I'm screwed. I'm stuck. It's just going to have to always be shaved down. Yeah. Uh, so. But yeah, the, the balds are taking over, Quaff. We're coming for your hair. Uh, so, so this this is uh you, you talked about this story that you have collaborated on here with a uh, Dr. John Watson, and I've been listening to a lot of uh, what is the classic radio on my Sirius XM, and they're always doing the the radio dramas of Wat Holmes and Watson and stuff, and oh, they always really? make reference to you know um, that you know they, they this is written with the uh, permission of the estate of Dame Jean Conan Doyle, la la la. Uh, I'm like, okay, well that was that was 50 years ago. Yeah, surely it's okay now, right? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's my understanding. Uh, I guess they'll have to tell me if that's not the case. But it's it's well out of well into public domain by this point. So same with Kipling, which was which made it just um, easy pickings because no one's ever combined their universes together, even though. Uh, uh, two, two of or three of their main uh, shared characters uh, fought in the same war, so it just made sense yeah, to handle. So. It's, it's, it's one of those things. Uh, it's like I like I told you guys in the chat when we were setting this up. Uh, I love it when two universes 
don't just merge together, but just basically reveal that they always coexisted side by side. You just never really mm -hmm. knew it until you saw the details fall into place. Um, I, I had the same feeling when I was reading uh, a comic book last week, of all things, uh, believe it or not. Uh, when they did Lock and Key and The Sandman uh, from mm -hmm. IDW, one, one of the good IDW books. Sometimes they, they really put one out there. Yeah, the art uh, on that's fabulous. It's gorgeous. And the story yeah. is... Uh, it, it's like, yeah, this this was happening at the same time Sandman number one was happening, and it makes perfect sense all the way oh, through cool. it. Oh, very nice. Oh, so, I'm thirsty. Hold on a second. Let me uh, oh. let's drink from my uh, handy dandy camel hide koozie. Camel hide? Oh my gosh! Look at that Kyrie koozie. I I have a koozie that's you know more colorful than that. Oh, of course. But the uh, that's the um, that's the inspiration for many, um, for me as well. It, it doesn't want to fit the, the bottom of my coffee mug. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> I think this. Yeah, we're 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 all uh, we're, we're all shilling out tonight. You know, you got your Curie koozie. I got my Critical Blast mug that no one can buy. Beautiful. I can't even buy another one. I don't know where I got this one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And and if you've seen my shirt, like yeah. what? Like what? <laughs> I didn't know she made those. That's crazy. She, she had this one and another one, and I'm like, yeah, I, I, I it was, it was a no-brainer as to which one I was picking. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm man it. enough to wear that. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah, loud and proud. Absolutely. So this is um, mm -hmm. Tales of Curie. Is this going to involve any of your main characters from issues one and two, or is this sort of like just set in the same universe? Yeah, so that's that was another um, uh, storytelling approach that I wanted to take. Was uh, so for the first two books, I already had them. Uh, I I finished them at the point of me launching, and uh, I knew that I wanted to keep having a campaign ready a few months after fulfilling the last one and uh last year for uh, a number of reasons including some famous reasons some worldwide reasons uh, i didn't uh, get as many pages done for curie book three as i wanted to so i couldn't uh i couldn't completely fulfill book two and then jump straight to book three so uh i thought to myself uh how can i kind of um tell uh maybe some of the other stories that i won't be able to get to because i'm not going to just keep doing um the same books forever like can i do something that's kind of like a sequel that never was uh and i i grew up on um what really got me into col comics is anthologies and uh um, mm, yeah like like um kazu Kabui i think i think the seat is still warm from uh the great kazu uh sitting here a few months ago <laughs> um like what he did with the flight anthologies was, uh, I mean, groundbreaking isn't a strong enough word, I think, for people who are just kind of perusing Barnes and Noble in the the mid two thousands and uh, just seeing like a just a cornucopia of styles and people kind of doing variations on a theme. So I thought, can I do that with Curie? Uh, can I tell uh, slices into a larger world? Uh, and um, can I do that with uh, some of the characters from the Curie series that I'm writing and drawing? But can I can I place it a few years, a uh, few steps down the line from the main story, and then kind of allude to the fallout and the consequences of the stuff that's being led up to with the main story? So it's kind of a foreshadowing with the sequel, if that makes sense. Uh, so you, it's not gonna it's not gonna spoil the main books, but it's gonna um, it's going to flesh out. You're going to see uh, more context for what you can anticipate for how the uh, the books are going to play out. So yes, yeah, so so Myra, uh, the main character, she's going to uh, be uh, doing some stuff. Oh, there's the camera. Uh, <laughs> oh, let's that's the full, female character. Let's get full screen. We want to see that. Oh, oh. this comes let's with get, uh, the Rubicon Club. That's uh, a sticker. It's it's a magnet. And it's oh, very fuzzy. Even better. Only magnets this time. Uh, reusable stickers. 
but yeah, so we're just we're following her life a bit later, and we're seeing her uh, run around with uh, a younger character named Lucius. Uh, he's a prince from Palmyra, and we're uh, uh, right at the end of the uh, Palmarine Rebellion uh, when Palmyra tried to make it uh, uh, go out on its own as a separate independent kingdom from Rome uh, under Queen Zenobia. Uh, all fi all historical characters, no fiction at that point. And um, and in the in the historical accounts, Lucius drops off the record. We don't we don't know what happened after. Uh, Paul Myra fell. So in, in my story, uh, Myra picks up uh, Lucius, and we're going to see uh, what she does with him uh, as as uh, her ward, I guess, trying to help uh, keep him alive and keep him, uh, um, may maybe give him some gainful, gainfully employed skills. And uh, we're going to catch them at different points in their lives. And uh, uh, some of that's going to involve... Uh, other characters who pick up little bits and pieces of the evidence of their their quests all the way in uh, far off Afghanistan in 1880 with uh, Larry's story uh, with yeah. uh, Dr. Watson. So well, that, that's what I want to get to here in, in just a second to figure that figure out the connection between you know mm -hmm. pretty much the Roman Empire and uh, you know the Khyber Pass <laughs> uh, kind of kind of stuff. Um, more, more, more people joining the chat here. We do have a question. First of all, you mentioned Kazu Kibuishi. Uh, had him on the channel, gosh, several months ago. That was fun. Um, so yeah, that was you, great. If you've talked with him, then you've you've touched greatness, my friend. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Heronberg in the chat as our wrench, and he has a question. Uh, so Kyrie equals North Africa tales. Are you familiar with the story of Kahina, the Berber warrior queen who resisted Islamic invaders? We'd like to eventually turn that into a comic. Any interest? Uh, I think we just got. I think he just got pitched. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, on all points. And I, I think what I'm realizing is one of the things that uh, you know I often kind of pitch Curie as uh, Indiana Jones in Ancient Rome, if I want to do the mashup kind of pitch. But I am. I am. I've always been interested in trying to figure out how to tell uh, heroic female characters in a way that. Uh, I think should be done uh, should be uh, better handled than maybe what is popularly portrayed in comics and popular media nowadays, where uh, you really do put them if you care about them, you you make their lives horrible, <laughs> so that they can actually uh, learn just just as a uh, uh, you know as deeply as uh, any other kind of character. So that's. That's what I'm doing with Myra in the Curie stories. I'm I'm ruining her life repeatedly, and I think that's that anything less would would not be uh, an expression of love on the author's part. <laughs> you you you've got to put them through their through their uh, tribulations. Uh, yeah. Amanda, Amanda B, welcome to the show. Glad to see you out in the chat there. If you're still wanting to do comic book reviews, uh, you, you know, we waved. We have a channel. You, you, you'd be more than welcome to come on here and do them. Uh, yeah. Justin Dutton says that Kyrie Wild Tales equals Dunk and Egg from A Song of Fire and Ice. Uh, helped build the world. So. Huh. What do you think about that, Larry? I mean, I, I, I think that's very good because from what I hear, Dunk and Egg is one of the few things from the expanded universe that's broadly liked by the by the fandom for uh, Game of Thrones. So Did I, they not I get killed? That. I mean, I think so. Did Duncan Egg survived all the way through because I thought you pretty much I thought I haven't watched it but I pretty much heard from fans that Game of Thrones ends with like you know uh, J.R. Uh, you know George R. J.R.R. Tolkien yeah George R. R. Martin walks onto the set with a flamethrower and just kills everybody and then walks off into the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the TV show. We'll we'll see oh. if the books do okay. that. <laughs> well, no, we won't. We will never see no. if the books do that. I'm just kidding. Hey, yeah. you know, we'll uh, the, Highland estate, the Highland Estate, the Tolkien Estate finished book, so you know it, it could happen. This is this is true. I mean, you know, we we conclusion time of all things. So, uh, almost almost said Jordan Peterson's real time. That would have been a mess. <laughs> the cosmic <laughs> power of cleaning your room. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And you're going to have to clean it again and again and again. <laughs> it's, it's going to come in cycles. Uh, all right. So 
Wild Tales of Kyrie somehow jumps the time frame from the Roman Empire to uh, the war, the war in Afghanistan in the 1800s. What's what's the tie? What's the connection here? So there is a uh, there's an ancient artifact. Oh, well, let's let, let's look right at the ancient here. artifact. That's a roll of duct tape. Oh no way! <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a decoder cipher. And it has a uh, particular character on the front that you may recognize from the Kyrie series. Yes. Uh, and uh, inside, uh, there's going to be some treasure for you. Uh, this is available also with the koozie on the uh, the Rub Rubicon Club tier. There's only a couple left that I'm putting up right now. But within the story, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a code that needs to be deciphered which uh, Dr. Watson and Cy uh, deciphers with uh, Danny and Peachy of the Kipling uh, story. When they go, they kind of go AWOL at the, at the close of the war to uh, stop a, a um, put this down, a group of uh, uh, rebellious uh, Sikh lancers who are trying to steal the diamond nose of Ahmad Durrani, who is a, uh, one of the most famous Afghan uh, warlords. They're they're uh, plundering his tomb to bring back a diamond to the Punjab and reinstall the uh, uh, Sikh kingdom. And uh, so they're going to use that diamond to do that. And uh, uh, this 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 very device plays a, a central role. So we got this 3D printed so that you can uh, uh, decode uh, using. A scroll inside you can uh, unroll that uh, with the, the uh, code in the key you can uh, uh, line up these two kind of uh, you know the alphabets twice on these two rings and you can decode uh, discount codes for all future Kyrie campaigns but ah. for the purposes of the story you can uh, you can kind of uh, see be able to, yeah to decode along with John Hamish Watson yeah. yeah yeah so that's 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 the fun we're trying to figure out um, it's it's funny. We've had I think 110 uh, backers so far, and half of those have just been for this Rubicon Club. So these are very popular, and I think uh, we're figuring out how campaigns are really storytelling. I guess, and all perks are stories, and you're you're picking like how do I, what which story in these perks do I want to engage with? Like at what level do I want to invest in the story of your campaign? So, yeah, well, um, the thing yeah. about your your um, your artifact here, it, it, it's very unique as far as uh, add-ons go to campaign things because you've got stickers, you've got hats. Basically, every other tool that people have added on has been mm -hmm. um, advertising, whereas yeah. yours uh, involves the reader in the story. Mm -hmm. and it, it, oh. it, it, go ahead. Also, there was a question that popped up in the chat. So somebody asked about battles between Sikhs and Gurkhas. Well, as it turns out, Danny and Peachy were both characters in a popular movie. Well, not really popular, but a, a cult classic of a movie starring Michael Caine and Sir Sean Connery, where they both meet a Gurkha in a rural Afghan village who becomes their translator and guide. And so I decided that when we bring these characters into this new story, of course, there's a Gurkha with them to assist them in their misadventures. So, yes, there will be a Gurkha fighting a Sikh in the story. I feel like I need to go back to, like, uh, a junior college um, Middle Eastern history class to, to, <laughs> to either, you know, learn how to read this comic or learn how to read this no. comic and then go in and ace the class like I know. It. <laughs> and I promise, um, Cap Captain Cockney Spock... Uh, I'm one of his uh, number one newest fans. Uh, any story with a red red coat and pith helmet, I'm interested. We definitely do have that. Um, I I do want to assure you guys. So it's anthology stories, right? But uh, they do have a beginning, middle, and end. Uh, even though a couple might end in a cliffhanger, uh, you don't have to know anything coming in. You don't have to be uh, having read the the Curie books to understand what's going on and. Um, uh, that's just kind of another like behind the scenes aspect of this is we wanted to tell some uh, classic uh, high adventure stories that uh, can give you a taste uh, using other people's art. Uh, 
I, I would say uh, <laughs> some of well, I'll just say some of my favorite artists that are out there in this sort of ecosystem right now to just uh, give you uh, their flair on on the stories we're we're telling. And if you like it, and if you like you know twelve, fourteen page, seventeen page uh, slices into this world, uh, you can get two hundred and eighty pages so far with the graphic novels. And those are drawn by me, but they're a little. I have a weird art style, so maybe you'd want you'd rather start off with uh, Jose Garcia, for instance, who did the uh, Southwest India story, and uh, yeah. So it's kind of like an appetizer, like a buffet of small plate uh, tapas or something. And yeah, we'll we'll give you the uh, the steak dinner with the graphic novels. I, I love. Oh, what, uh, go ahead, Larry. Pardon you me. What I was gonna say is. Yeah, pardon me. I was going to say this also. Is I actually really love Jason White's art style. I was exposed to him right. first through DS Volt and now working on this project. It's I never realized how much fondness I had for the old Prince Valiant comic books until I look at how he does his art. Uh, Jesse does his art. And I'm like, going, yeah, that, that actually is really good for this sort of storytelling. Yeah, it's, it's a very good uh, style to emulate. Um... I always mm -hmm. skipped over the adventure strips when I was a kid because I was there for the Garfield and the Peanuts. And uh, but you know, every once in a while, I would read Brenda Starr and, <laughs> and Rex Morgan Indy. But Prince Valiant was, um, looking back on it, was was exquisitely detailed and and brilliantly yeah. colored as well. Um, what well, and and though it was, I I'm so I'm sad when I think about those because it's like impenetrably. Uh, I mean, you you have to be sitting down, I guess, reading. I, d I don't know when you're you're supposed to know that the story's starting, but you have to be reading every every week to even understand what's happening. Which is, uh, I I don't know, it's a travesty. I guess they could have just assumed that everyone was picking up the newspaper uh, week in and week out for years to uh, follow that, you know. But you can't yeah. do that anymore. So, yeah. well, Prince Prince Valiant was cursed with a bad haircut from the beginning, and that's. Yeah, <laughs> that's the elephant in the room, really. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Like, really? You know, Conan can show you how to cut your hair for battle here. Uh, yeah, that, that's how you should. That's how you should do it. But yeah, I love the uh, anthology comics. I, you know, grew up on, you know, the the ghosts and the House of Mystery, and uh, that that's what I liked was hor the horror anthologies. But yeah, you know, cool. they did horror anthologies and they did war anthologies all the time. So. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, related to that, something that I would love to see somebody actually take on that nobody's done yet is something like in the Weird War space, because those yeah. were some very fun and weird comic books. GI Robot. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was it? The creature. They, they, here's the thing. And I'm, I'm, hang on, where's my soapbox at? Uh, <laughs> they. There, it was an era where comics were edited and written by people, believe it or not, who loved comics yeah. uh, and weren't just doing it to keep an IP alive. So, so when they go back and they try to put lightning back in the bottle again and they come back and they try to redo Weird War Tales and they try to redo, you know, Creek Commandos, they fail because they try to make it something that it wasn't. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's no good. <laughs> just, you know, just, uh, read, read 20 of them, then sit down and write another one and you'll be in the right voice and you'll have the right tone and just put it out there. Like it came out of the seventies unprinted before people will eat mm -hmm. that stuff up. Uh, you know, quit, quit yeah. trying to modernize it and, you know, give the, give it a moral morality play of any kind. It's just a comic book. Uh, it's, it's not GI robot was not in history. Okay, <laughs> just that sounds great. I've never heard of GI Robot, but the name alone. Uh, oh, he was in Weird War. Yeah. Wow. He, he he was a he was a robot in a uniform, and he went out and shot things and had feelings about it. Never talked. Never even had a thought bubble. Uh, it was you know wow. his, <clears throat> just the way he acted would would cover it all, and you know his his platoon of humans would would you know imply meaning on top of how he acted and how he felt. Um, yeah, that was that That's was cool wonderful. Stuff. That's brilliant. Uh, you, you mentioned um, 
Jose Garcia. I had him on the show last week. And <laughs> it's one of those many instances this week where I can tell that my, my fingers are getting smarter than my head. Um, <clears throat> or, or rather, they're, they're, they have a mind of their own. They no longer want to listen to my head. Mm -hmm. so, so they're typing things that I would not more commonly type. Uh, like I tried to put up a supernatural contest this week and I kept typing Superman instead of super nah. And I'm like, no, back up, backspace. Um, for whatever reason, I, you know, called this wild world of Kyrie instead of wild tales of Kyrie because, you know, I was thinking wide world of sports. Oh, I uh, liked that you did that. That felt, I like the, I thought that was a nice personal touch. Well, it was a, completely accidental, I assure you. <laughs> and, and when I add <laughs> Jose Garcia on there for, I, I, totally botched his name because my fingers like yeah jose luis Garcia lopez is gonna be on the show i'm like no not that one <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and, and apparently he actually gets uh jose jlgl's email um oh wow that's who he wants. so he gets his mail physical mail they send him awards and he meets him at conventions and said i've got any, any mail for me oh my goodness <laughs> well, he's, he's gonna be getting awards in his own name pretty soon i'm sure I, oh, apparently yeah. i just found out on a stream First time talking to him. This guy, like he he did the whole 14 pages and like, it, it, I don't even know if it was three weeks. It might have been less. It's, he's incredibly fast and his art is incredibly detailed. Yeah. And, and I and think I, he Fox. told me I was the first one to give him a, a shot, which I find uh, that's probably a lie. But he's, he's just flattering me. But now, I mean, I'm, I'm glad I got him then because I wouldn't be able to get him now. Uh, can, can I can I just point out in the chat of uh, Captain Cotton Wait. Spock, non-binary robots transformers. That's probably the comment of the night. That's pretty. That's pretty exceptional. Yes. So. Yes, they are. <laughs> 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 Sorry. The, I mean, the setup for that was uh, Justin Dutton asked for a non-binary GI robot, which just makes sense, you know, in this day and age. <laughs> well, you, ro robot. You can't have a non-binary robot because that's the code they run on. Oh um, my there, goodness! There, <laughs> great. There is no maybe switch. Uh, now Thirty years in IT. No, it's it's on or it's off. <laughs> you hear that, Cockney, Cockney Spock? That was the joke you should have made. Transformers is good thing, though. I, I yeah. like Transformers because they, they do change, um, and they can change their mind. Uh, so I haven't <laughs> talked about any of the tiers yet. You've got on here because busy talking about other stuff but we do have here's that rubicon club pack that you mentioned this is the feature tier only 49 dollars uh you know i say only 49 dollars, but i'm looking at a whole passel of stuff here including um this is a there's this is a koozie a camel skin looking koozie for uh for Kyrie. and mm -hmm. uh die cut magnets of the the two characters uh you've got your decoder ring it looks like is this a patch it is. It's Shay a, the Red has infected you with uh, her with her need for patches. Yeah, that's exactly. She's exactly who got me to do this. <laughs> yep, yep. Whether in DMs or talking on stream or anywhere, it was always patch, patch, patch. So I had to figure out. Well, how can I make it more than just a patch? I found someone who could do gold thread, uh, so it looks really uh, nice and shiny. Very and nice. So everyone that's can know. All your friends can know that you're in the Rubicon Club. So. That go perfect on, a, on an epaulette kind of. She she's got to have a, yeah. a a great looking jacket that she wears to conventions. Mm -hmm. It's gonna have all these patches on it. Yeah. Um, you actually do some comic books with this too, by the way. You get the uh, where where are they? Oh yeah, you get Wild Tales issue number one, uh, and you get the Kandahar Crisis Ash Can, which is the John Watson, uh, Rudyard Kipling characters uh, crossover. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, that is the uh, that's a pre Sherlock Watson. Uh, because he comes back from that war before he meets Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, well, that's that's what's fun is is it opens with uh, Watson. Uh, at, as you as you know, uh, normally it's um, Watson uh, recording uh, Holmes's adventures or their you know both of their adventures, and uh, for so for this one it's Holmes uh, recording a, a story that uh, that uh watson's recalling from his from his youth from the famous the war wound that that he's always talking about with his uh which canonically i guess uh migrates from his leg to his shoulder depends on 
when you're reading uh, Conan Doyle, but uh, yeah. we get to see how he gets that war wound, and it's in our story. So, and what's interesting also about this is I was reading um, a manga from the Monogatari series, and it mentions how in all but one of the Conan Doyle Holmes and Watson stories, it's Watson recording things, but there's one which Holmes does it for Watson. So that was part of what inspired me to frame it with Watson telling Holmes this story. That and obviously, if you're going to have Watson in here, you, you want to have Holmes in here, especially if the story goes on further. Oh yeah, and I was going—I was just going to mention how it was a nice little reverse of roles there that Holmes would be the one writing it down because. Holmes's writing style would be completely uh, antithetical to Watson's, you know, because because Holmes was always, you know, on to Watson about, you know, how he was, um, you know, you, you're you're making this too tawdry, you're you're colorizing things. It's just a just just simple facts, you know. They're just common deductions. Uh, mm -hmm. So I would imagine that if if Holmes had really written something, it would be the most boring, dry thing in the world to read. <laughs> Watson was in Kandahar. He got shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, we don't have to to uh, do the novel novelization of this. Yes. Yeah. No, no, that would be but, a little bit more of a challenge. <laughs> and if people do like this, uh, we're, we're, we hope to do more. Uh, so that it, it'd be really fun to uh, uh, to keep pushing the uh, the the what the Holmes verse, Holmes and Watson verse, and see if we can uh, take things into London and uh do uh, future versions because i i the the golden ideal for this is to put so there's four stories here for just 15 uh both bagged and boarded but uh we want to do another round of this maybe in a year or two and then we can collect them all together uh, and there'll be multiple um you know this is part one of the kandahar crisis and then we'll do a second part with watson and uh and then we can collect it all into a uh, into a um, like a hardcover edition or something or something that looks yeah. more like uh, Kazu Kobuishi's kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so. and by the way, you're, you're you're being warned not to do any Jack the Ripper. Too much of that uh, already. I haven't seen any yeah. myself, but um, Jack that's... the Ripper's in Vestige. <laughs> He's featured in Vestige. Oh well, that's why I haven't seen it. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> that's not in CG. <laughs> If you say you're CG, you're in CG. That's the that's the rule. Actually, the rule is if somebody else says you're in CG, you're in CG. I don't think you can actually uh, enlist yourself. Uh, you have to be pushed in by somebody else. Um, so you you alluded to the fact that uh, this um, it's not on there. It's the gold patch, the koozie, the drawing, the ash can, the magnet, the gold. Did what? You don't have this. Somebody? You you don't have the decoder uh, on your list of included items. It's not. Oh my goodness. Oh, how embarrassing it, is that? It, it, you know you, that we can fix that in editing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I promise you're getting it, guys. There's there's only three left, and you, so you can't edit it now. But um, uh, but yeah, but you so believe that this is going to be used in future campaigns for getting perks. If you have if you have this one, you're going to be eligible for future perks because you have this one. Yeah, yeah. So we're that's that's a you know that's part of this the whole storytelling of uh, of these perks, right? So we're trying we're we're trying to make sure like this this is going to pay for itself because uh, I'm I'm sticking with Kyrie is going to be what I go back to every other campaign or so, and uh, the Rubicon Club is my way of saying you know for those who are going to cross the Rubicon with me if they're going to commit, then I'm going to make sure that it's uh, they're getting more than their their um, dollars worth with every campaign and every campaign is going to be even cheaper for them for uh, stepping up and investing up front like this because uh, the, the profits of Kyrie books one and two uh, paid for all of the art uh, up front and uh, and I'm co coloring it and so all this campaign is doing is is paying for shipping and and printing uh, which we're doing domestically so all right. Uh, hmm. Jose Garcia is in the chat. Said, hey, Matt, are you familiar with a image comics called, uh, and I'm sure he's talking to, he's either talking to you or he's talking to the Matt in the chat. We got two of them here tonight. It's going to get confusing. Yeah, uh, image comics called A Land Called Tarot. I picture a Kyrie book on that writing art style. 
Oh. I have not. A land called Tarot. That sounds really interesting. Image, like so coming in from picking stuff up, coming in from like the Kazu Kobuishi end and the webcomics end, and uh, starting with Kickstarter books being really like my, uh, and some manga with my serious introduction to comics as an adult, and uh, only reading like Tintin and Asterix as a kid. Uh, I, I didn't even really know that much. I didn't know all the lore of, Im of Image being like the savior of a dying comics industry <laughs> that I'm well, supposed to have known. The savior or the killer. We haven't decided. The jury's still out. They were like, oh, yeah, the, aren't those those guys who do Star Wars and Aliens? Like, that that's pretty cool. They're so, just doing so wait, other people's licensed stories. So, but, so wait, RJ, you're saying that Image Comics Threat or Menace should be the uh, title? Yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> savior, savior or menace? Because, uh, because, yeah, I mean, they they did great work for the uh, creator owned, uh, creators' rights and stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, they flooded the market with so much collectible crap uh, mm -hmm. that was going to be hot. I mean, come on, Gen thirteen was was a killer book that you just had to always have, and that Deathmate Black was their very first appearance. If you could get Deathmate Black, uh, the black cover. Oh, that was mm -hmm. you, you were going to retire on that. It's in quarter bins all over the place. And they got like thousands of copies of them because retailers just over ordered. All the image books were like that, though. Yeah, just more of the same. But I, 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 I do know. wish I could go back in time and just start with image and just be reading, you know, from the '90s up till now. Because yeah. that, I mean, it's it's incredible the, the stuff they put up with. And I and I will be looking up. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, it's my cat. Battle cat's walking across the... <laughs> I was hoping he was under the camera line, but clearly not. <laughs> he looked huge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you're, you're, you're thinking too small there, man. I'm, I'm, I'm working on building up a, a handful of antique change so I can go back all the way and just, you know, get action comics and detective comics when they were on the spinner rack uh, oh, for cool. a dime. Beautiful. If we're, we're going to time travel and pick up books, <laughs> come on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do it right. It, can I can I quickly say uh, Wilberforce? Uh, yes, I look exactly like my voice suggests. And um, the next Curie book proper um, that will be after I fulfill this, uh, which is I'm fulfilling it this summer. Hopefully, I have about a third, a little over a third of it drawn, and uh, so hopefully by this fall I can put up a pre-launch uh, page for that. So I don't want to leave people hanging more than a year. I think that's kind of improper for an installment. So that's that's the goal. Matt, Matt is either correcting me on my uh, image recollection or somebody else in the chat. He, 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 can, he, can, he can educate me Thursday, I'm sure, about what really happened with Image Comics. Oh, Matt, I love and Matt. He, and by Harold the way, he, yeah. he co-wrote another story. I, I did. I tried to, um, with Matt Rees, I do have to say, uh, he's such a special creature that I knew the only way that I was going to get him to stop fighting me and on Twitter is to hire him. Uh, <laughs> so, so he wrote the 1904 uh, uh, Japanese and Russian war uh, where we have a, a, a train heist uh, situation with uh, agents and double agents and, and Leninists and uh, revolutionaries crossing each other to try and stop a, uh, a um a japanese dragon from being resurrected from uh a, a with an ancient witch's urn so that's also in the story uh in this anthology just for 15 dollars oh. five dollars yeah. domestic shipping matt should have jumped in on the link damn yeah, yeah. <laughs> give, give more people in here so yeah now you, you talked about a dragon now this is something that i have not um asked about and and, and by the way we heroinberg is our is, is our resident google um and he's got the scoop on a land called Tarot, graphic fantasy novel by Gail Bertrand, uh, who did Hellblazer and Time Warp, that has been called a cross between Mobius and Toriyama with very little dialogue. Um, that sounds lovely. But but you talk about resurrecting a dragon. Now, dragons are these mythological creatures, I, I'm assuming. I'm kind of hoping they're not. I'd love to find one someday. Uh, but, you know, if I'm going strictly by the book, uh, they don't they don't exist. So, so Kyrie is history but it's blended with mythology and some you know sort of 
extra natural. I, won't, I don't want to say supernatural. I don't know how far that goes, but definitely extra natural um, elements to it. Am I correct on that? Yeah. Um, if you sc scroll down a couple pages, you'll see uh, me kind of giving the exposition on on the witch, uh, Himiko, and her dragon. Uh, that would be an example of... Here she is. Uh, all of this is is the history books, except for the dragon part. Uh, she really did unify Japan in the third century at the same time as uh, the main characters of Kyrie. Uh, she, uh, she really was a witch, and she really didn't um, see anybody. She, she unified, and somehow, with, by only speaking to one person, at a time, uh, she she had like this this confidant individual that she would see and no one else, and uh, she she ruled from a castle and she used her dark arts to bewitch her enemies and uh, uh, I bring bring a, a kind of uh, bewitched prosperity to her people. It's it's really interesting uh, to read the uh, you know the the high mythology tales of early Japan. So I like how the dragon, and, yeah. yeah. I like how the dragon is the largest thing on the page, and you don't notice it, yeah, unless you look for it. it, it, it it's yeah. so huge and so close up that you can't see it uh, until you said, "Oh, wait, there's this eyeball, and something's coiling around here." Yeah, the the line work artist was uh, Kaden Rauk. She's a Ukrainian artist, and uh, uh, Nasha Toby worked with her on Colton Crux and she did such a great job that I wanted to hire her to do this story because it involves Russians and uh, Leninists and I thought she'd be good at that and she does cool uh, um, cool looking dudes in uniform so had to had to give that to her and so that's so you're seeing more and more slices so the main the main uh, comic page shows uh, Myra uh, trying trying to to put down the dragon the first time in the third century with the uh, the head bodyguard of Himiko. And then we see that uh, it didn't quite take. And in 1904, uh, Lenin wants the dragon to, to unify Russia. Uh, the, uh, the, um, the, the czar wants the dragon to unify and, uh, and Japan wants it too. So, and all that takes place on a train. So, yep. And there's the there's the ash can, which I didn't realize. See, I'm all, I'm learning all these like the, the quote unquote the mainstream Western uh, comics lingo. I didn't realize ash cans are supposed to be black and white. So this one's full color. So well, well, the original ash cans were black and white, but later ash cans just basically became like this one, a color yeah. kicker that you use to incentivize. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. It, it, this is this is um, you know it, this is a it, it's a bonus. Uh, ash cans used to be like you know hey here's the comic we're going to make let's you know draw it up on a piece of paper fold it up so it reads like a comic okay here's the layout yes 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 okay this works make this comic okay what we do with this well we throw it away because it was just there to help us design and they threw it in the ash can which we don't even mm -hmm. call it that anymore it's a archaic. Um, I'm old I know these things. No, uh, just throw it away with your cigarette butts I guess yeah yeah exactly. It's well. It's like the you know when when Disney finished animating something, they didn't keep the cells; they stacked them up in a bundle and put them out on the back stoop for the trash guy to take. Yeah. Uh, can, can you imagine taking those home? Like, oh, some pretty pictures. I'll save some of these. That guy lives in a mansion built on a yacht. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> so here's yeah. here's the best place to read tears. I've had to finally figure this out. I keep trying to read the left, and then I keep getting past the or, or the right side of the screen. And then I get past it and I gotta scroll back up. You know, I'm just gonna screw that. I'm going down here. I'm gonna do the big, do the big thing. Y'all can click on the left, the right hand side of the page later and uh, do that. And if you're gonna click on it, by the way, the link to this go, uh, fundraiser is right down there in the description. It will take you right to the Indiegogo, uh, so you can get in on funding this. Uh, you're already double funded plus some, double plus funded. Um, you're Orwellian funded, I guess. Uh, so, so congrats <laughs> on that. Yeah, thanks, guys. And like I said, like this was already um, pre-paid for, so um, really after taxes and all that, we were in the black after 
1k so everything else uh that helps us uh pay pay for the next anthology you know or to make uh curie book three even better and i'm, al I'm also kind of looking there's i don't know, the, the last stream i was on with larry actually we we're talking about uh those those um cereal boxes that are like one serving size you yeah know i'm talking about oh yeah and maybe you could put I, i'm i don't know i'm looking at toys i can put in those uh for the rubicon club so y'all y'all are too young to know this but those those ser one <laughs> serving yeah or back in my day we used to get those single serving cereal boxes uh, <laughs> and, and as a kid my wife cool. just just walked over here to shake her head which i knew I haven't told her about that. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So use the yeah. You know, they they, they had uh, perforations on the face of them, mm -hmm. uh, and you would you would turn the cereal box on its side, and you would punch in the perforation down and then across both tops and fold it out, and there would be the bag with the seam going on it. And then you open the bag like so, and then you poured the milk directly into the bag, and you ate the cereal out of the bag, out of the box. Yeah, out of the side of the box, right? Yeah. Just on its side, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That 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 was never a recipe for disaster for young kids to uh, try to do. Um, yeah. Because bags leak, apparently. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, cereal boxes are cool, but now that you've got this koozie out here, you you, you really want to look at, like, getting some uh, Kyrie micro brew um, ale. Oh wow! <laughs> just ship it with with alcohol. That's that's not a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, I actually I do brew my own beer, so that's actually there. You go. The, you only, could, the only question is the way. Yeah. Oh, tell me about it. Mm -hmm. I, I I'm fulfilling for a guy. I helped him with the you know his, his consulted on his crowdfunding. He said, "Yeah, we'll fulfill." And here's the rates for all your books. And then he goes out and he puts metal covers on them. I'm like. We need to talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it oh, just changed. Oh, no. <laughs> that was a conditional estimate. Mm. But that wow. that's cool. I, I wish I was interviewing you on what you're doing for fulfillment because you're uh, really changing the game. I, I yeah, like fulfillment. It's it, like like you. Like I just kind of enjoy the dealing with the, uh, the numbers of it. Yeah. It, it is kind of – it's fun in its own way. But um, – I think I think this whole ecosystem has been looking for uh, some people who are talented in that sphere, who aren't also trying to shill their own product per se, but like ha have that kind of that time and interest to invest, uh, so that they can do multiple fulfillments for people, and particularly especially to do international fulfillment. So it's so cool that you uh, jumped in. We're doing uh, the international yeah. inbound to the U.S. Uh, I'm talking with a guy this weekend. We're trying to do international outbound from the U.S. Uh, if, 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 if it works the way it shows on paper, I should be able to ship a unit, you know, a one-pound Gemini mailer box uh, to the U.K. for $14 per unit uh, instead, wow. of the, instead of the 25 that it usually is. But, you know, okay. that's perfect world situation. So we got we to gotta see. Uh, and we're doing micro um consulting things on the side here too i mean we've got everything set up but we've got people who are going to do their own fulfillment but uh they send us their spreadsheets uh to put through our database and then come back to them with uh the pack lists you know here, here, here's your 800 pages of packing lists so that you know you can hand them out to your people and say okay this one put this together put the pack list in it and ship it out uh, and and yeah, you know yeah. we we divide them into the different configurations. So you're like, here's a hundred pages where everybody's getting the same thing. So, you know, you won't get it mixed up. Just make a hundred of the same thing and then put your labels on and gone and done. So mm -hmm. we've been helping people out with that as well. Uh, I do That's like awesome. these magnets here. These are cool. Uh, I almost thought for a second that these were like chunky magnets. Uh, when I saw the, the, it's an illusion of the art that on this one, that I thought was kind of like a chunky magnet where things were raised up on it. Uh, it's it's not it's flat, but it's uh, cool. Still. I know what you mean. Yeah, uh, I I don't want to look into those too. Like yeah, it's it's little things like that that I think really people do appreciate. It's that tactile nature, right? Anything that yeah. makes it so much worth more than a uh, PDF can give you, you know. Yeah, oh, you got you got a little. Uh, speaking of cereal box, you got a little cereal box yeah. back advertisement comic here for the the decoder ring uh, yeah. 
it's just it's a dream come true to do that. It's, it's an old buddy for like the past ten years. Uh, he just does these comic strip type things uh, with weird, you know, face reactions and stuff. And it's like I, I couldn't, I could never figure out how to get him. I was like, I have to work with you, buddy. Like, but I don't know how. And finally, I figured out how he can just he can make this bizarre advertisement for the decoder. So, yeah. And, and this thing really looks cool. The fact that it works. Um, who, who did you design this with? I mean, did you find one that already existed and said, I want to put my own design on it and here's how it fits together? Or? Uh, I found... Um, I found this, basically. Uh, this is a prototype. And uh, this already exists on, I think it's Thingiverse. Okay. And then uh, with my... 3D modeling skills, such as they are, I just put a bottom. I made the and I made the top, and I and I figured out what a, a second uh, PLA plastic material could be that could uh, imitate copper, and then I paint a patina on that copper. Uh, Got it. So, um, so it's hand painted. I, I made the cap. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's like a marble plastic looking material. You know, it's kind of like a cookies and cream sort of plastic going on. Yeah. And then on top is uh, it's it really comes out as like a brown uh, plastic, and then I I I paint it to look metal metallic. Uh, oh. So this is going to be hand painted for people. So that's one reason why this has to be limited. Just uh, you know, there's only three more of them available, folks. By the way, so if you haven't got yours yet, uh, it might be gone by the end of this stream. Uh, and and of course now, Matt, you're committed to making more of these things. Not not this thing, but more relics from the world of Kyrie. Um, and and yeah. I swear to God, if you if you, if your next campaign makes me translate, drink your Ovaltine, be sure to drink your Ovaltine. We will hunt you down. You, you know that's that's probably what the code is going to be. So, you know. But if it, hey, if, if you, you type that in, it gets you a discount to the future books. Yes. Crash. We'll turn that frown upside down. A crass commercial. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so you get two two cover stock variants. How are these? How, oh, I see. I'm looking at the pictures like, okay, this is one of those challenges where I've got to find the differences. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. But, but you've got it's... one's a gloss and one's a hologram. Yeah, and that's that's the one I don't actually I I did even get that printed, um, but I left that at work because I was showing it off to coworkers. But yeah, you can get holographic foil, uh, like a radial burst. Uh, it's the same uh, printer that Rags uses, so it's it's quality. Uh, they're they're doing uh, this kind of holographic radial burst cover for uh, Sailor Rogowski, so I I needed to jump in on that too, so. Uh, if you right. want that, so, and that, that's another thing we're trying to do. Like, I, I don't know the stretch goal things. I think a lot of people, they're, they're, they're pleasantly surprised when they hit stretch goals, but people aren't really gunning for them. Uh, I, I, I just think people would like it more if my quote unquote stretch goals are just um, optional perks and you can just buy in. I can give you a cheaper comic. If you just want the comic, which a lot of people just want the comic, so I can give it to you for 15 instead of 20 or 25. Or, you know, if you would prefer to get holographic, and some people don't want the shiny variant, you know, I don't need to do a one size fits all with these campaigns. So if you want more, you can get that. And it costs more to print. So it's the same. I'm not making any more of a uh, profit on it, but it's a, uh, it costs $5 more to print. So uh, it's just uh, 20 for that. And uh, if you want all the swag, you know, most people actually, I think from my, the feedback that I'm getting is people think it's a nice thought, but it goes right in the, uh, in the ash can. Uh, if, if oh, you yeah. give people the, a lot the, of bookmarks and, and stickers. Yeah. So yeah, I just, I just figured out. I'd give you, you know, permanent stuff that you can keep if you want it. Uh, you know, some of which you might want to keep around. Um, I know Justin Dutton's already thinking about keeping it, um, keeping his weed in it. That's not the first person who said that. Um, <laughs> well, you know, both Indiegogo and Kickstarter have um, kind of changed the way people need to think about designing their uh, campaign pages now because they've, yeah. they've created the add-on capability. Uh, so, you yeah. know, you don't have to have, oh, I've got 
I've got to have 18 different tiers to get every permutation possible uh, yeah. so that they don't have to. No, you just, here's the book. Other stuff to follow. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so the, you can get, you know, the gloss cover for $15, the hologram for 20. Am I reading this right? That they're $5 to ship domestic? Yep, that's correct. All right. So that, that's uh, cheap at twice the price. Well, no, not really, but it's average at twice the price. Uh, yeah. If you if you bought anything on Indiegogo before, especially crowdfunded comics, you know uh, this is a deal. Uh, original 8x10 art tier for just $80. Now, what do we get in the art tier? You get with your Wild Tales. I oh. assume you have to pick which version. Um. Well, maybe I didn't lay that out clearly enough. Um, basically, I'll just draw you, you know, commissioned art at eight by ten of a subject of your choosing. So that's what the eighty dollar. Very nice. This is, uh, I, I, I like. You know what to draw to sell your campaign. I'm just going to leave it at that. These are pretty faces. Um, thanks. And, and and it's very, <laughs> you know, a lot of attention gets paid to the boobs. Homage to the boobs, but an artist who can draw a good face will uh, always get my money over, you know, a bad face on top of big boobs. Um, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah, guess... with expressions and everything like that, it's just mm -hmm. it's difficult. Yeah, I don't think I'm I'm big. I don't think I'm the guy. You know, we we know a lot of guys who can handle that better than I I can. Let's just say that <laughs> with the. The, the, there's a lot of TNA guys, and they do a fabulous job, and I'd just be uh, inferior. So I, I'd rather just draw a pretty face and put some cool uh, cultural clothing on it. Yeah, just and those art is. pieces that you have there, those all look like those would all be excellent T-shirts. That's yeah. a fun idea. That's a fun idea, Larry. Yeah, you're at the point where you can do T-shirts. <laughs> this, this is why I hired this guy. <laughs> I tell people on their first campaigns, uh, you know, don't do anything with your first campaign but the book, uh, yeah. some stickers. Uh, and, and if you're going to do stickers, not your character, unless your character's standing under the logo, but definitely do the logo uh, because you want something that people, th 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 the whole reason for stretch goals and the whole reason for the add ons is to turn your backers into your marketing team. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you, you have a stretch goal out there. So that people who have backed the book want the stretch goal and continue to push your book to other people for mm -hmm. free, <laughs> and and you know to make you more money and then you pay them with a stretch goal. Uh, that's 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 really what's happening there, folks. Uh, and and, and mm -hmm. yes, we we know that TNA could be AAT. <laughs> <laughs> and am I the only guy out there who doesn't go for AAT because my 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 CDO says no, it should be ATT because you've got <laughs> one of one and two of the other, and it's and it's CDO because it's the same thing as OCD, but the letters are in alphabetical order as they should be. Uh, that's a joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to no. be a joke. I just see. Um, I think there was a uh, in the expanded universe. There was there was some sort of weird um, variant of the ADAT or the ATST that was like an AAT. Uh, so that's that's uh, hmm, that says a lot about me. But that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, it's a okay. imperial just... assault walker of some of uh, variation. <laughs> rather now, than now, uh, that, now we can have some uh, yeah. fan fan artist out there draw up some giant mech. Um, <laughs> of an AAT that'll be like, you know, a mech with big bazoombas, uh, big guns, big, big guns. <laughs> big guns. Yeah. Two of them. Yep. Uh, so what do you get? Story one, Spectre of the Witch. Uh, this is the Russo-Japanese War by Matt Krotz and Matthew Reese. Matthew, you should, if you knew this was good, you should have asked for the link, man. You should have been in here. Um, story two, Rebel Gambit. Uh, this is not, you know, taking place on Hoth. This is the Queen of Palmyra. Uh, this is a 14-page story with uh, Matt and Jose Garcia. Uh, 
I like that I know all the names on here. <laughs> this is like, I, I, oh, I look at names and I'm like, hey, this is going to be quality because I know these people. Uh, my God, you got Fresher Luke on here. He's you know friend of the channel. He's had him on. Mm -hmm. um, so three stories there. And then the Kandahar crisis. This is the only time we start talking to people that I have not had on the channel before, like Larry and uh, Jesse White. Uh, I'm glad we've corrected half of that. Um, now, you, you talked about the Kandahar crisis part two earlier, uh, and I kind of uh, didn't grab onto that hook. Uh, is this, well, never mind. It says it right there. I'm an idiot. Uh, I just got to read the text. Uh, so, so how much of a cliffhanger are you going to hang us on here uh, until we get part two? I mean, well, it's, it's kind of the other arm of this anthology. It's, it's following uh, Myra throughout uh, the course of her life after uh, the events of the main Curie series. That's really just arm one, and that's all the stories except for these ash cans, uh, this ash can and whatever the next ash can is. And the next, um, and then uh, the Kandahar crisis part one and two is going to, is really the other arm where we're really trying to see like how far we can take this uh, Dr. Watson story. So uh, really, I mean, it is a bit of a, a, to be honest, I think it's a very satisfying uh, cliffhanger, but um, we've already, I mean, with the funds of this, we've already paid for part two. So um, that, that'll get, you know, probably later this year, get put into production and then we get to, okay. Uh, Larry, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Larry. <laughs> let me bring you in. So we're like part two, we're really thinking more about like, how can we, um, so, uh, Watson is telling a story from his, uh, earlier in his life, but, uh, part two is going to be more like, okay, now, now these events are, are really hitting them, uh, Holmes and Watson in their, their shared present. And now, I mean, uh, why is Watson telling Holmes this story? Yeah. It's not just about him recounting the war wound. So the second half is where this circles back to why he's telling Holmes about these two men, Danny and Peachy, that he met in the Anglo-Afghan war. Uh, the game is afoot. Indeed. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I get that. So, but it's going to, the second part is going to come later this same year. Uh, that was what I really wanted to get to because you know, if you, if you got to wait two years uh, for a cliffhanger, you, you, you know, there's this this thing, you know, like the, the law of diminishing expectations. Uh, the longer you got to wait for something, uh, the less likely you are to finally come back for it when it does come out. Um, no, that, that's a fair that's a fair point. Uh, there's no reason why I can't put the ash can out. Uh, I mean, eventually this will get collected into something bigger, but there's no reason why it has to come out with another wild tales because it's already a standalone ash can. So, uh, you, you know what, RJ, because you said it, you, you're hearing it here first. Uh, let's put out the ash can with Curie book three with the very next campaign. So there you nice. go. Folks. Nice. Uh, that, that's continuity of, of storytelling right there. So very cool. Now, now I've got to get, now I'll be on board for book three. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I love my Sherlock Holmes. I love good Holmes. So so don't oh, let me down, Larry. <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 no, no, I'm not going to let you down. Also, one of the early versions we pitched as a script we may do also as a story because there's one in which I brought Irene Adler in, and I actually had a friend who is a feminist theorist in sociology, and I had her say, listen, because, you know, she needed money because people with sociology degrees, not a lot of them were able to actually use it for something. And I asked her to do, like, a feminist critique of it. And she said, I'm really impressed on how you didn't do X, Y through Z with Irene Adler. You did something good and appropriate with the character. Yeah, I, like I, I really loved it. Yeah, we almost went with that, his, his, uh, that particular treatment. Yeah, that, that was more of a, uh, like, the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes kind of story. I liked... The first one was, like, it it, it, it got me, because I went through the whole movie thinking, oh, I hate this, I hate this, oh, God, I hate this. <laughs> and, and then I got to the end, and it, like, hit the twist, I'm like, oh, my God, that was genius. 
the whole, the whole thing makes yeah. sense now. Um, yeah. It, it's told with love, isn't it? Like, I don't yeah. think it's, uh, I, I don't know. Somehow they've been kind of relegated to the dustbin, I guess, because of the BBC versions that somehow feel more quote unquote realistic. Uh, but, um, the CBS version was pretty good. Um, yeah. Elementary, I think it was called. That was actually a good one. Hmm. Yeah, I, I have not seen any of that. I'm waiting for it to come on Netflix and I'll, I'll start watching that one. Um, there was a, you, you, every, anytime someone talked about Irene Adler, of course, uh, I, you know, he never called her Irene. He called her the woman. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to, to Sherlock, he, she was Great. always the woman. And, and yes. that reminds me, there was, and I was looking for it online here. I couldn't find the, the name of the book. There was a collection of Moriarty stories mm. that somebody published like about 10 years ago uh, that were all transcribed by Colonel Sebastian Moran uh, to oh, keep wow. things in Yeah, and, and wow. there was an Irene Adler story. Uh, and, and he starts off her story by saying, you know, whenever he referred to her, he always called her that bitch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, she was the woman, she was that bitch. Um, I wish I could remember what that was because it was modern a, a twist. really good bunch of really good Moriarty tales that, you know, Sebastian Moran just wrote down just because he's like, you know, hey, Watson's not the only one who could tell a story. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's fun. Yeah. And, we, and that's, that's really we the campaign. Play. That's it. So that, that, that's it. That's the campaign, folks. So yeah. get in yeah. on that. Uh, get in on the let's, let's see if there's any of these left. I'm going to bet that I've done absolutely nothing for you tonight because that's, you know, that, that's part no. of the course of the show. We are. You've let me oh, have a chat with you, and that's. Wait, we've gone up. I think that did go up. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. at forty-seven seventeen, and now it's at forty-seven forty. So somebody bought something. Thank you. Uh, I I'll also say something interesting that uh, when we were over on the Gospel of Comics, the church brought up is Matt's colored everything. So not only is there an editorial footprint, there's also a visual footprint. That is consistent throughout all these stories. Yeah, yeah, Matt, your colors are great. Um, it's thanks. It's it's um, it, it's a signature coloring style, really. Uh, it's a lot of times you'll see somebody's, you know, you're, you're, you have your generic colorists, uh, and you're like, oh, these colors are nice. Who did they? Say, okay, yeah, it's that person. They they do good work. But mm -hmm. this is one of the things where you look at the coloring, like that looks like Matt Crotz did the coloring on it. Um, so, you know, that looks like Charles uh, Charles Vest did the painting on that painting, and you know, obviously it was him uh, because of very unique style. So uh, you're oh, you're going to you. get called in for um, to to color other people's books. And Harrenberg, you're right; it is time for shake and bake. We have to anytime a campaign goes up while that campaign is being covered on the channel, we claim the credit for it. It is our shake and bake it's moment. Shake and bake, and I it's shake help. And bake, and I help. So <laughs> that was delightful. <laughs> that, that's that's one of a handful of stingers that I very rarely get to use. Uh, I'm still waiting, oh, still yeah. waiting to get an argument sometime with uh, somebody named Jane. Jane, you ignorant slut. Jane, you ignorant <laughs> slut. <laughs> uh, well, oh, Bianca Zombie, welcome. Yeah, you're, you're here just in time for us to say goodbye, Bianca. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, guys, this is this is um, a great looking book. I'm adding this one to the ones that I'm going to be backing. I, yes, I do actually back books sometimes, guys, um, because I really want that decoder. <laughs> we're going to start seeing we're going to start seeing Twitter messages in code uh, back and forth. <laughs> it's yeah. just going to be you know hash, hashtag Kyrie something unintelligible, and that's when people are going to be. Like, oh, that's a really good idea for. For teasing stuff. That's a great that's idea. That, that's how you guys should promote stuff, but then we're going to just back and forth it to each other. It's like, you know, you're a doo doo head. <laughs> we'll be saying stupid stuff. In it. We're cursing in code <laughs> like we did in third grade. Uh, but anyway, guys, uh, Matt, Larry, thank you so much for bringing this on the show tonight. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking with you. And it's, and it's always intriguing entering the world of Kyrie because I come out learning so much. Uh, and I find out just how smart my chat is and how smart my guests are and how uneducated, I almost said dumb, uneducated I am in a lot of areas. So uh, with that, 
Uh, folks in the chat, thank you so much for being here tonight. We appreciate you guys immensely. We don't have a show without you. Yes, definitely hit that like button if you like this. Subscribe to the channel. We are less than 200 hours away from hitting that 4,000 watch hour goal. So Next if you got, if you leave your computers on at night, just pick a playlist, play it, put it on mute, go to bed, uh, you know, turn it off in the morning. Uh, that's, that's what I do. So, <laughs> and with that, uh, we just hope, as always, that you came.